All right, so today's video is gonna be the five most important things to consider if you're thinking of getting solar PV installed in your home. Now I've had my solar system set up here for about seven months now and during that time I've learned quite a lot from having the system and seeing it being installed. So this is a video that I wish I had watched before I had actually bought them. Let's get into it. First up then, is your home suitable? In the UK, ideally you wanna have a south facing roof if you're gonna have solar panels. Um, so south for me is this way. So that's pretty much south facing. And as you can see, well, it's pretty cloudy today, but the sun is somewhere around about that direction. Because it's so cloudy today, you can't really tell, but this side of my face should be lit a bit more than this side of my face. And that's exactly how solar panels work. They wanna be facing the sun so they get maximum light in contact with those panels. As well, what you really want is a pitched roof. So consider the construction type of your roof. Is it a flat roof or a pitched roof? Pitched roofs are perfect because they're angled to be in more direct contact with the sun. And um, they're also over-engineered, so you shouldn't have to worry about adding the extra load and the weight of those solar panels. Whereas a flat roof, that might be something that you'd have to consider. But yeah, for most uh, pitched roofs like this one, not an issue. You also wanna consider in-roof panels or on-roof panels. In my opinion, on-roof panels, in-roof panels are the best. That's what I've gone for here. These, in my opinion, look way better and they've got the added benefit of there being no sort of void underneath it uh, that birds can get under and nest in and then you've got all the maintenance issues that come along with that. It's just a much nicer and neater solution. It's hard to see because I haven't got any scaffolding up outside the house anymore, but you can see the flashing around the, uh, the solar panels up there. So along the top and down across the bottom, we've gone for a LED flashing on the front here, which just looks way better in my opinion. Around the back, we've got six more panels. And when they were put up, they were put up with a plastic flashing, which I thought looked God awful. So thankfully I got on top of that. And before we fitted these three on the front, I made sure that I had some LED um, ready to go down in place of the plastic flashing. But yeah, in terms of the flashing and making sure that you're happy with the product that's installed in your home, I would say firstly, double check with the installers and also check the manufacturer's website as well because when these were fitted, as I said, on the back, we had this uh, like horrible corrugated plastic put in as the flashing along the top didn't like it at all. Check the manufacturer's website and that wasn't really how they were meant to be fitted. There was an extra um, bit of equipment that was meant to go on over the top of that, which the installers didn't do. So I actually bought the lead here myself to go on the front because I just bit the bullet, paid for it. I knew that it was gonna look way better. Uh, so yeah, make sure that you always check with the installers, but also the manufacturers, so you know what you're getting and you know it's gonna look good. Next up then is scaffolding. Scaffolding is something that you might wanna consider getting yourself, or you might wanna ask your installer if they can do it for you. Basically, uh, on this build, I got the scaffold myself. Instead of actually hiring the scaffold, I actually bought the scaffold. We were doing so much work to the house, we completely put a new roof on it and we built an extension out the back as well. So I actually bought some cat box scaffolding. Can't recommend it enough. But if you're just considering having solar panels, you can either rent it or, as I said, get your installer to provide the scaffolding. One thing to consider if you're gonna rent it um, is that usually you get it for a period, say four weeks, and then after that, if the job runs over, you're usually paying on it either a daily basis or a weekly basis for the extended period of hire. What I will say though, is that if you're gonna be providing the scaffold yourself, just be aware of any delays in the job. Um, on this project, I had quite a few issues and quite a few delays with the installers where I was constantly phoning them, trying to get them here to fit more panels and to do finish the job off. And it was just a constant struggle getting them on getting them on site. So if I had the added stress of having to deal with the scaffolders or the people that I've hired the scaffold off, you know, sort of trying to mitigate the cost for their delay, it would have just been a nightmare. So definitely consider that. Um, and as I said, yeah, always try to get the installers to provide the scaffolding. Next up then, the electrical setup. You wanna make sure that your current electrical setup in your property is capable of the additional loads that you're gonna put on it when you have your solar PV installed. So first thing to do is to check your outside box. You wanna check that and see what size cutout fuse you've got on there. This is not something that I was aware of back in the day when I was starting to look into this, which was probably over a year even one and a half years ago now. But yeah, check your cutout fuse in your outside box. Ideally, you want this to be a 100 amp fuse, as luckily was, but older properties may have either a 60 or an 80 amp fuse. So just check that out, uh, send it to your installer. If it is a lower, like a 60 or an 80, let them know and let them advise further on that. And then moving on inside as well, you've got your main consumer unit or fuse board. Every house is gonna have one of these. This is what controls all the electricity in your house. And you're gonna have different circuits on it. But yeah, basically check your main consumer unit. Um, you may need to upgrade yours. It may have space left on it. It may have some blanks. Um, but yeah, I would say, make sure that you speak to your installer about this at detail. Um, ask them loads of questions and fully understand it because this is something that I've had a few issues with here. 
where when we were updating the house and renovating the house, we had this new main consumer unit fitted. Um, I forget how many are in there, 18, I can't remember. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, we kept adding and adding and adding to it and now it's completely rammed full. And what we recently had to do, because we had, the RCD was tripping on that side, which is where the solar panels were. And the reason for that is because it was overloaded. So what we've had to now do is push everything across one and put an RCBO in here on its own for the solar so that it doesn't keep tripping the RCD. Um, but yeah, you may need to update yours. The best thing to do if you can is to have a separate garage board. Um, here we didn't have enough space for that so we had to sort of encompass it all in this one. But yeah, the main consumer unit is gonna play a vital part on connecting your system. You're also gonna have an inverter, which is this right here. That's a five kilowatt inverter. And if you're gonna go for batteries, you're gonna have some batteries as well. So consider the space where you're gonna put that. I'm currently in our utility room, as you can see. And I built that cupboard specifically for the solar panel, uh, not panels, the solar inverter, batteries, and the fuse board. Um, but yeah, if you can, if you've got a garage, perfect, because as you can see, that's really, really tight. I'm gonna put a door across the front of it, but ideally you wanna have much more space than that. Um, a garage would be perfect. Make sure you've got enough circulation going around the batteries, it's not too stuffy, and yeah, you've got plenty of space. Next up then is to consider what size system you want, what array size you want. And that is basically the size of your PV system, which is gonna determine how much energy you're gonna be able to generate in your home, basically. And this is usually determined by how much roof space you have, specifically how much south facing roof space you've got because that's the area where you're really gonna get the most gain from the solar panels. But speak to your installers or anyone you're going out to get quotes from, send them photos of your roof and let them advise you further on that. But uh, yeah, for me, I've got six panels on my south facing roof and three panels out on the front of the house, which is more sort of southwest facing. So nine in total. And for me, it was really important that because I haven't got that much roof space, that we got the best panels we could. So they're 400 watt panels, which at the time was the best I could get. And um, so yeah, with the limited space that we've got, we're able to generate as much as we possibly could. But the more the better. And if you've got land outside, plenty of, I don't know, even a field say, or plenty of garden space that you don't mind cornering a bit off, you could even have some planted outside, but always make sure to consider the shade um, of any trees or anything surrounding them, because obviously you wanna get maximum sunlight hit those panels. And lastly then, batteries. Should you consider getting batteries? We've got batteries and I strongly believe that most people should consider getting batteries if, you've, if your budget allows for it basically and uh, determining on how much time you're spending at home during the day and at night. Batteries basically elevate your solar PV system so much because the majority of people obviously are at home during the evenings when there is no sun. So it basically just provides a bit of a backup during the day um, for you to be able to use at night. I've got two 2.5 kilowatt batteries here, so a five kilowatt battery storage. Um, it goes pretty quickly at night. It's nowhere near enough to get us through the night. We have got an air source heat pump here as well, which obviously consumes quite a lot, so that doesn't help. But I think I've read previously that it's about 20 kilowatts you need to get you through a night. So our five kilowatts is only 25% of that. And um, we're a household of three and it goes within a couple of hours. And um, when we come home from work and we start turning all the appliances on. But yeah, definitely get batteries if you can but always consider storage space as well, because as I said, if I wanna expand on our battery pack, we're gonna struggle because we've got two batteries in there already and yeah, it's tight. We'd probably have to stack them vertically instead of on their back. If we were gonna do that, get sort of a, I forget what they're called, you can get sort of a deck to store them all in. So that may be something to consider, might be something that I'm gonna look into uh, increasing. But as well, when you buy your solar PV system, if you're gonna get batteries, get them then, because then you get them tax-free. Whereas now, after having it all fitted and I've paid up the company who's done it for us, if I wanna buy extra batteries off them or anywhere else, I'm gonna to have to pay the VAT on it. And lastly, with regards to the batteries, this is something that we've sort of been learning. It's been a big learning curve for us. And we've had them for about seven months now. But yeah, if you really wanna get the maximum out of them, what you wanna do is turn as many appliances on, like your washing machine, your dishwasher during the day, so that it uses the PV, the sun directly coming off of the PV panels, whilst at the same time having enough time after you've used those appliances to still charge your batteries into the night. 
and say you've got two or three loads of washing that need doing this week, instead of chucking them all on, on the Monday, do one on the Monday, and then if Tuesday's a sunny day, wait to do the second one on the Tuesday, even in the evening, at least you're only doing one per day versus three all at once. It all gets done during the week and it costs you less money because you're doing it when your batteries are full or when the sun is shining and it's coming straight in. So yeah, definitely consider your usage. So they're my five things that you need to know if you're considering getting solar PV. I hope that's been helpful. Um, I'm also gonna upload a video talking about the costs associated with solar PVs, the pros and cons as well. Um, I thought it was too much to try and put into one video because I know when I was looking into getting solar panels, there was just so much information and I couldn't deal with it. So I thought I'd break this up into a couple of videos, make them easier to follow. But yeah, hope you enjoyed that one. Um, let me know if you've got any comments. Um, as I said, I've learned a lot from having these installed seven months down the line now. So hopefully I'll be able to answer any queries. But yeah, stay tuned, like the video, and please subscribe. See you next time.